Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to Swayam Prabha. The course title is Principles of Marketing and the lecture title is Pricing Decisions Part 2. This is Module 10, Lecture 1. I am Dr. Shoma Singupta, Associate Professor Commerce, Kamla Nehru College, University of Delhi. In this module, we will discuss the following two topics, Pricing Policies and Strategies, Ethical Issues in Pricing Decisions. In this first lecture, we will discuss the pricing policies and strategies. Pricing policies and strategies. Pricing policy refers to a systematic approach to pricing of different products in different markets to evolve an appropriate pattern of prices in the long run. The different pricing policies and strategies are skimming the cream, pricing or price skimming, penetration pricing, geographical pricing, product line pricing, premium strategy, economical strategy is also there, promotional pricing, discriminatory pricing and psychological pricing. We will discuss all these pricing strategies in the next few slides. Skimming the cream pricing. This is also known as price skimming strategy. Now, during the initial stage of the introduction of the product, if the product is unique one and it is enjoying a high reputation, so the marketer may think of getting as much profit as it can in the introductory stage itself if people are waiting for that product and then they will keep the product's price so high so that uh, they can earn maximum profit in the initial stages when there are no competitors. So whatever profits they can get during this stage and that is known as skimming the cream. So charging a very high price in the initial stage of the product life cycle is known as skimming the cream pricing policy. The uh, uh, idea is to skim the cream uh, and if it is an inelastic market whereby uh, uh, the customers are not that price sensitive, initial investment is recovered quickly here and there are high immediate profits and it makes the product only accessible to the up market initially. Later on, they can reduce the prices and then more and more customers from a little lesser strata will join and will buy the product. So initially only the upmarket people will buy the product till the time the competitors enter the market and the prices will go on reducing thereafter. So this strategy is based on the plea that mm, substantial expenses are incurred on research, advertisement and sales promotion program. Competitors are absent in the initial stages of the new product and the manufacturer obtain high immediate profits for fear of competition at the later stages. Reasons for using skimming the cream policy or pricing policy or you can say the importance or whatever applicability that can be discussed in these few points. That is uh, skimming the cream pricing strategies objective is to obtain quick return for initial investment and earn more profits at during the initial stages of the uh, product life cycle to get back the substantial expenses incurred on research advertisement and sales promotion program to take benefits of the absence of the competition in the initial stage of the new product also, we have discussed that manufacturer obtain high immediate profits for fear of competition at the later stages. So, we are covering that point here again. 
also having low elastic demand as we have discussed inelastic demand for the new product is there so there this uh, strategy is beneficial to maintain a scope for rectif rectification in price errors later on so initially you are charging high you are getting the profits maybe you will reach the break even also so this is the skimming the pr uh, cream pricing policy to attract the consumers of high income group and also use more for luxury products for up market products and also the idea is to strike a balance in demand and supply of the product during the initial stages the demand is higher the supply is less so you can keep the prices a little higher the next pricing strategy is penetration pricing now this penetration pricing is exactly opposite of price skimming in price skimming we are keeping the initial prices very high and in penetration we are keeping the prices low to enter the market to gain entry into the market or aggressive pricing strategy whereby manufacturer sells to the masses this strategy involves setting a low initial price to attract as many buyers as possible and capture the market share prices are kept below the competitive level to maximize the market share and to make the brand popular quickly the strategy uh, is used where uh, 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 in which low markup is there and it results into higher volume the merits of this strategy is it ensures higher sales volumes volume during the initial stages of the product life cycle helps in gaining popularity and market share helps in developing brand preferences among the consumers so they will get to know about the brand they will try the brand and if they find it satisfactory then they will stick to the brand and thereafter you can in fact increase the prices slowly so initially you want customers to just try the product or buy the product and that's why the prices are kept low discourages the entry of new firm if you are keeping your prices low then the new firm will not enter the market because they will not see profitability here helps in obtaining economies of scale because there will be higher demand for the product the sales volume will be higher and so the production will be also higher at a larger scale and the company can enjoy the economies of large scale production so the cost will reduce and you can uh, 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 you can even if you are uh, you have substantially reduced the prices but you will still manage to get some profits so this is penetration pricing further there are certain conditions for the sub of penetration pricing strategy the demand for the product here is uh, and should be highly elastic so sales volume varies in proportion with the price so if the prices are low then more and more people will buy the product the demand will be higher strong competition in the market is there substitutes and new firms can gain uh, easy entry uh production on a large scale uh, is done to minimize the cost of production per unit very few customers or consumers can afford high prices in uh, such type of market so they will go for low price products unutilized capacity exists so if you reduce the prices the demand will be higher and you can uh, use this this excess capacity and you can have the economies of large scale production geographical pricing now you know that the customers may be located in different parts of the country or different parts of the world and the transportation cost to reach those customers will vary uh, and so the question is what should be the price of the product sold in different region or different cities or different countries so what should be the approach to pricing the product should it be uniform that means if you buy a standardized product in say uh, kolkata or in mumbai or in um, uh, any of the cities of india will it remain the same or it will differ from uh, a place to place so that is the question which is asked 
uh, and uh, that is solved by geographical pricing. Now, it involves uh, the company in deciding how to price its product to customers located in different parts of the country. So, different strategies of geographical pricing is uh, are there. One is point of production or FOB origin pricing. FOB means free on board. Now, here the goods are produced and placed free on board a carrier and that is the point of pricing. So, here the transfer is taking place from the manufacturer to the whoever it is, whether it is a wholesaler, retailer or the actual buyer and this includes, this price includes the cost of production and free on board. Okay, and after that, all the expenditure will be borne by the uh, 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 buyer. So, th this is the point, the title and responsibility passes to the customer who pay the freight from the factory. So, manufacturing and boarding is done by the manufacturer and priced there only and the freight will also be borne by the customer and all other expenditure like, like the insurance and everything. Now, the second method is uniform delivered uh, pricing and this is also known as postage stamp pricing. Here, company charges the same price plus freight to all customers regardless of the location. So, the price includes uh, all the charges till the freight also. The freight also is borne by the seller. So, uh, uh, it, it is irrespective of where the customers are located and the, the price will remain the same. So, that's why it is uniform delivered pricing. The next uh, geographical pricing strategy is zone pricing. Here the company establishes two or more zones. All customers within a zone pay the same total price and this price is higher in more distant zone. So, if a zone is nearer to the um, place of production, there the price will be less because the transportation cost will be less and a zone which is uh, at a distant place, the price will be more as the transportation cost will be more. Then the next one is basing point pricing. This allows the seller to des designate some city as a basing point and charge all customers the freight cost from the city to the customer location. Now, regardless of the city from which the goods are actually shipped, but this from this point only that will be priced. So, this is base, uh, basing point pricing. The next is freight absorption pricing. This is just like the uniform pricing. The seller absorb all or part of the actual freight charges in order to get the business and this they do because um, they want to penetrate the market. So, this is used for market penetration and also to hold on to the increasingly competitive markets. So, here the seller is ready to cover the freight charges also. The next pricing strategy is product line pricing. Now, it is possible that a manufacturer is producing uh, uh, different products of the same product line. Now, they have to decide how to price these products which are of the same product line only. Like if Hindustan uh, Lever is manufacturing say five varieties of soap and uh, they are of different quality and catering to different strata of society, then they have to decide how they should be. All the five soaps should be priced. Mm, each of them should be priced so that the difference in the quality and difference in the uh, uh, target audience to which it, it will be catering that can be maintained but some similarity in terms of product line is also maintained. So, differentiation should also be there in terms of quality, in terms of standard, in terms of perception of the customers. So, this strategy is used when the company has more than one product in a product line. Prices are set for various products in a product line based on cost differences between the products Customers evaluation of different features, customers evaluation of the prices of the competitors. Now, firms adopt this strategy to separate products in the same category into various price groups. To create different quality levels in the customer's mind like good, better and best product, 
this is sold at low medium and premium or high price points respectively so uh, 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 it, it it is possible that the, the, there is a difference in the quality of the products you know that when uh, if you are willing uh, in, in, intending to buy basmati rice they are available in different grades and each of these grade is priced differently the, uh, one may be the uh, inferior quality basmati rice is priced low and the most superior one at premium prices uh, although the brand is the same the manufacturer is the same different prices are set as also as econo economy price uh, environmental uh, models pricing for environmental models pricing for luxury models so they will differ in that term also the seller's task is to establish perceived quality differences that justify the price differences now there are different types of product line pricing uh, one is price lining and in this pricing is done for different products for a limited number of prices so uh, suppose if we talk about a dollar shop everything is available at 1 dollar only each one each of the product so that is price lining um, uh, they, there are there are only limited number of prices in that case then the next is captive pricing this is to attract the consumers and encourage them to purchase uh, by offering a pro basic product for really low price okay but however they, they will have to purchase additional items at higher prices so this happens in case of uh, different products uh, like um, in the case of razor and blades uh, so razor's price is low so that is used as a captive price and people are encouraged to buy uh, buy a razor because the price is low but then they have to buy a uh, high priced uh, blades for using that razor so uh, the uh, manufacturer or the marketer will recover the loss in selling the razor by more gain in selling the uh, uh this uh, blades but in some in uh, india also forcing uh, customers to buy uh, both the products may may attract the provisions of competition act uh, which was earlier known as Mon monopolies and restrictive trade practices act now similar to that it there can be bundled pricing this is an approach of selling products and their accessories or other options as one product for one price so few products are bundled together and they are sold so this can come under the competition act or mrtps uh, restrictive trade practices which we used to call them uh, where you are forcing the customer to buy all the products then there can be bait selling this again comes under competition act um, and this is considered unethical and illegal also um, promoting items at a really low price to entice customers but this low price product has a limited stock and most of the time they are out of stock but nevertheless they, that attracts the customers to the shop so that customers are attracted and then the, they are encouraged to purchase a higher price product so this low price product is used as a bait and that's why it is considered as unethical and and illegal then comes the leader pricing there is uh, this is again similar to bait plan, uh, pricing but one of the product is um, uh, uh, is placed as a loss leader in, uh, where uh, it entices customers to come to the store by advertising these items that is the loss leader at a, they are sold at a low price very low price and customers end up buying additional products at their full prices so this is again used as a bait loss leader and uh, the customers are attracted towards the store but they later on they end up buying the higher priced products so these are the different types of product line pricing the outcomes of this strategy are if the price differences between two successive products is small so buyers will often buy the product which they perceive to be better so there are two soaps of the same product line and uh, the uh, price difference is very less then a uh, buyer will go for the uh, product which is better the company's profits will increase if the price difference is greater than the difference in cost 
if the price difference is large customers will buy the cheaper product so these are certain outcomes of this strategy uh, coming to the benefits to the sellers or for the sellers as well as the buyers uh, first of all it simplifies the buying decision of the buyer and rest the benefit goes to the seller enables sellers to maintain control over inventories seller can compete at all levels in the market prices of individual products may be marked up or down to fit fit them into the accepted product line and to ensure an overall profit the demerit of this strategy is it may be difficult to alter the price line when significant changes occur in the course of production so this is all about product line pricing another pricing strategy is premium strategy this uses a high price for high quality products so this is quite justified this is there is a high quality product and you are keeping the prices premium or high price and this is catering to a specific strata of society those people who go for high quality product and they don't mind paying the high price fair uh, to customers and they see it as just and fair so that is the thing it is fair and the customers also perceive it as fair the example is designer clothes and premium cars like jaguar the characteristics of consumers who go for premium price products are customers who are not able to judge value using uh, use price to help establish levels of quality so if there are so many brands and you don't know which one will be of better quality so you go for that product that brand which is at placed at a higher price believing that it will be of high quality customers who are suspicious about low price offers about quality service and reliability so those who are skeptical that if the product is uh, available at a low price then uh, will it be of high quality or not customers who are conscious about their image so they want to go for high price product only to maintain that kind of reputation and image in the society especially for conspicuously consumed uh, goods which which will be seen by others uh, as we have said conspicuously consumed products like um, uh, like uh, luxury cars if you are uh, if you are buying that means you want to show off to others also that you use this type of Uh, goods or price uh, products so this is about premium strategy now exactly opposite to premium strategy is economy pricing strategy now it is a deliberate strategy of low pricing so you are keeping your product offering or service offering at the lowest possible price the market marketers offers a no frills product or service with a price reflecting this for example spice jet indigo these are no frills airlines and the prices of the tickets are the lowest possible and uh, but no uh, uh, everything on board is uh, priced differently and uh, you have to pay additionally if you want to buy snacks or any uh, even a bisleri uh, water or any kind of mineral water they will give you only a small um, pack of water um, uh, bottle of water and rest you have to pay so the price is just for the service of transporting you from one place to another and all other thing are no uh, you have to buy but they are not uh, uh, included in the price and that's why the price is the lowest possible so marketer should consider the desired product positioning in the marketplace if they are going for economy pricing they should not consider your pr product offering as cheap rather they should uh, consider your product offering as the best value for mo their money and uh, since there are no frills the merit is that it caters well to the economy class customers or economy customers the drawback is that a product that competes purely on price is vulnerable to attack from more established products so this is economy pricing promotional pricing now here companies temporarily price their products below the list price and sometimes even below cost under certain circumstances because they are promoting their product the types of promotional pricing are special event pricing where they you want to draw more customers 
cash rebates to get the customers to buy more within a specified time period and help manufacturer clear inventories low interest financing stimulating sales without lowering the price use for costly items psychological discounting putting an artificially high price on a product and then offering it as a substantial savings the demerits of uh, promotional pricing are if they work competitors copy them rapidly and they lose their effectiveness in the long run if they do not work they prove to be a wasteful expenditure of uh, waste of money which could have been put into longer impact marketing tools so this is promotional pricing another pricing strategy is discriminatory pricing whereby you are charging uh, uh, different types of customers at different pr uh, prices or rates or uh, customers located at different places at different rates so any kind of discrimination if you are having a uh, while pricing the products uh, for different types of customers then it is considered as discriminatory pricing so you have to justify you why you are charging a different price so discriminatory pricing describes a situation where the company sells a product or service at two or more prices that do not reflect a proportional difference in cost in cost so firm modify their basic price to accommodate differences in customers maybe uh, the justification is that the customers uh, purchasing power is different and that's why you are charging them differently or the customers are buying it from different types of outlets and that's why you, they they are being charged differently the products differences are there location differences are there uh, timing differences may be there and so on so that is discriminatory pricing uh, in india we have the maximum resale price and uh, because of that in uh, certain cases discriminatory pricing is not allowed uh, but for other purposes in other economies discriminatory pricing is quite prevalent the forms of discriminatory pricing are customer segment pricing different customer groups are charged different at different prices for the same product or service for example zoo charges a lower admission fee for students so if you uh, show your i card even in monuments uh, dif uh, monuments in india and in uh, abroad you find that they are charged at a lower admission uh, uh, fee rate uh, this is applicable for students sometimes for old age people so that kind of thing is there then location pricing different locations are priced differently even though the cost of offering each location is the same for example cinema theater and stadium varies its seat prices because of viewers preferences for certain locations then there is image pricing pricing the same product at two different levels based on image differences for example perfume manufacturer charge premium price for their high and high end variety based on packaging and branding and low price for low end brand the merit of discriminatory pricing is the firm can make the maximum profit based on customers capacity to pay the demerit is legal issues may arise if you cannot justify why you are selling at a discriminatory price or in india as i said that there is a maximum resale price over which you cannot sell the product so if you are violating it then then there are legal issues which are bound to arise the last pricing strategy which we are going to discuss here is the psychological pricing now psychological pricing is designed to get customers respond on an emotional rather than rational basis frequently it is used in uh, consumer market the most common is the use of the prices such as 1 rupee less than the uh, uh, full price like rupees 99 rupees 9999 so that gives an impression like if it is sold in 99 that you are not crossing 
figure or 9999 means less than 10,000. So that kind of feeling is there that you are not crossing a certain amount. But uh, you cannot fool the customers for long using the psychological pricing. Um, but here we presume that the customers are over sensitive, sensitive about price levels and are attracted by such prices. Now, uh, uh, they fail to see that it is just a matter of one rupee. Uh, but the demerit is customers have become wise enough to see that there is no real savings after all. So uh, you cannot fool them as I was telling you for in the long run. So this is psychological pricing. Nevertheless, for all kind of consumer products, this type of psychological pricing is um, uh, quite prevalent. So while pricing, you also have to take care of the discounts and rebates that the manufacturer or the marketer is offering to the customers. So there are different types of discounts and rebates which is given to the uh, 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 buyers uh, uh, and uh, uh, sometimes it, it, it increases the sales of the product also. Sometimes you want to uh, uh, transfer the stock from your go down to, the, to that of the seller, uh, sorry, the buyers. Also, you want to clear out your old stock, that is also possible. Um, uh, you uh, want to give them advantage of bulk purchasing. For all these purposes, discounts and rebates are there. So the first type is cash discounts, whereby deduction is granted to buyers for paying their bills within the specified time period. So if uh, they are not buying it on credit, then naturally cash discounts uh, can be given. It improves the liquidity of the sellers. It reduces the cost of collection and bad debts. Uh, then the second one is quantity discount. Reduction in price to the buyers who buy in large quantities must not exceed the cost savings to the sellers like savings in reduced expenses of selling inventory and transportation. Then the third one is the seasonal discounts. This is given to buyers for buying goods uh, in the off season period. Seller can maintain steady production during the year. Then there can be promotional allowances. Price reduction is granted by the seller as payment for promotional services performed by buyers. Especially if there are resellers, these promotional allowances are given to the retailers so that they can promote the product, they can display in a better manner, they can decorate their stores. Then the last one is functional discounts or trade discounts. This is reductions from the list price and this is offered by the seller to the buyers who resells the product and that means the uh, most of the time the retailers. Uh, this is to compensate the buyer for the cost of storage breaking bulk, repacking, delivering in small quantities. So these are the different discounts and rebates which are offered by the marketer or manufacturer of goods. So a quick summary of whatever we have read in this lecture. Uh, there are different pricing strategies. Uh, one is skimming the cream pricing that is charging a very high price in the initial stages of the PLC. Penetration pricing, setting a low initial price to attract as many buyers as is possible. Geographical pricing, price its products to customers located in different parts of the country. Product line pricing, different prices are set for various products in a product line. Premium strategy, this uses a high price for the high quality products. Economy pricing, which is exactly opposite. Deliberate strategy of low pricing. Promotional, price, promotional pricing, companies temporarily price their products below the list price. Discriminatory pricing, company sells a product or service at two or more prices to different types of customers. Psychological pricing, this is designed to get customers respond on an emotional basis. Also, the firms offer different types of discounts and rebates to promote their product or clear their stock. Thank you very much students. So this was pricing decisions part two, module 10, lecture one.